Looks like the penguin. You've got guts, I'll give you that. However... This guy's faster than he looks. Nice. He kind of is the penguin. You got off with just a scratch. You can't say the same. Oh, we got there fast. It's a new opening? No, I didn't even learn the first one. Oh no. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> Anyway, nice. Does that make this season two? Who's this? New character? Lots of new characters. This is the squad, Roy's squad. There he is. Hmm, interesting. I don't know if I should be watching this. I feel like maybe there are spoilers here, kind of. Cool, that's not bad. I like that opening. I think I like the first one a little bit better. But sometimes it takes time to grow on you. By the end of the last episode that had the original opening, I was so into it. I would get pumped every time. So I'm sure this one will grow on me. What's going on? Who is this? Oh, sir, you've returned. Welcome back. There she is. My name is Mei Ching, sir. Mei Ching. Episode 15, Envoy from the East. I was collapsed by the side of the road. Your master, Mr. Yoki, revived me and brought me back here. Master? Yoki, this is the guy that ratted Scar out last time? How do they end up together? You guys told me that in the manga this guy was introduced earlier, but in this show he sort of comes out of nowhere. I guess they expect you to either have read the manga or seen the, the 2003 show. But how do they end up together? Oh well, I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Allow me to close your wound. She's a young alchemist. It's a skill called alchemistry from the land of Xing. She's from Xing? That's right, sir. This girl crossed the desert from the east by herself to come here. Ha! Clearly ridiculous. <gasps> No, I wasn't alone. I had her with me, too. Cute. The art of reading the dragon's pulse, of knowing the power that flows through the ground and how to use it. That tattoo matches the flow of Alka history used in my homeland. Alka history, huh? There was a student of alchemy and Alka history, and he conducted a great deal of research into both fields. Oh, they're different. Your brother must have really been something. If he wasn't already enough of a sympathetic character, with the tragedy he experienced and the loss of his brother, adding... Xiao Mei as a sidekick. Super humanizing. It's confusing because he's after the state alchemists and we're attached to them too. But just in terms of Scar and his relatability, he's gone from just like cold-hearted killer to like this guy you sort of root for. It's cool. What do you think you're doing? Didn't he tell you to shove off, kid? We're not exactly going to Central for a picnic, you know. I know, but I meant what I told you. You mean all that immortality stuff you were blabbering about earlier? There's no such thing. Yes, sir! So she's also after immortality. Immortality can't be accomplished by alchemy, but it is possible through the use of alchemy. That's why I have to find him, the incredible man I've heard so much about. We see his hair and his eyes are golden like the sun. He wears Cute. a dashing red coat as he strides forth to save people in need. And he's super tall. <laughs> These characters and their obsessions. Black Hayate? What's gotten into you? Black Hayate? It's an interesting dog name. It's dangerous to be out walking the streets alone at this hour. Is that Barry the meat guy? The terrible serial killer feared by all. It is. Barry the chopper! Barry the chopper. <laughs> all right, that's it, lady. Now I'm gonna hear you scream! <laughs> I feel kind of bad for him. Every time he does that, it's so underwhelming. Nobody reacts the way he wants them to. You actually remind me of someone else I know. Let me guess. Alphonse something or other. I'm gonna tell you something, sweetheart. You are one strong woman. Okay. Plus, there were those other two, Lust and Envy. Are they the ones who made you into what you are now? No, it was the researchers who did that. Mm. Ripped my soul right out of my body and slapped it into this suit of armor you see here. We can track down these so-called researchers. If we find them, maybe they can tell us who ordered the experiments. Fat chance of that. They were all used to create Philosopher's Stones. There's not a single one of them left alive. Mm. Yeah, there's sort of no going back now. They're in kind of deep. 
Roy is sort of already operating in the shadows. And I guess he has two missions, right? One is to avenge the death of Hughes, and the other is to take power. And so beyond revenge, this is also an opportunity for him, in a way, to uncover this. Oh, is it Winry? Hello there, Winry. It is. Hi, Ed. Hi, Al. <laughs> what are you doing showing up like this? <laughs> yeah, I knew it. He messed it up last episode. What is this? <gasps> what was that? She's given up her former life as a pickpocket, and now she earns her money by fixing roofs and doing other odd jobs around town. Everything Winry touches turns to gold. And what about the two of you, huh? Mm. Made any progress yet? <gasps> yeah, we have. It's slow going, though. <clears throat> We're still moving ahead, little by little. Fair. That's kind of true. Show some time, huh? Yeah, how do we do that in a town made up entirely of auto mail shops? At least he gets to keep his shirt this time. Did you find a stray cat or something? Uh, well, no. <laughs> I feel so much better. You guys are lifesavers. Thanks a lot. Your treat, right? When did I say I was paying? Let's not quibble over something so small. We have come and fall! How lucky I am to have found such hospitality. So far from home. He has the panda handkerchief. I came from Xing. Oh, Xing. Is this Xiaomi's brother? The country to the east of the desert? Yeah. And crossing that desert was rough, let me tell you. Why in the world would you take that route? Right, she didn't go there alone. Anyway, I was headed here to do some alka history research. Alka history? Yes. What is it? I believe it's what you here in this country call alchemy. Oh. In Xing, it's known as alka history. It's mainly used in the medical professions. Here, alchemy's use is mainly military. Even now, we still have skirmishes at the borders of Arago to the south, Kreta to the west. North of us is the huge country, Drachma. This world just got a whole lot bigger. My name's Ling Yao. It's a pleasure. So Ling, what else can you tell us about Alka history? We'd sure love to learn more. Nothing. Yeah, sorry, but I'm not actually an Alka historist. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't practice Oops. Alka history, why well, come all the way here to research it? Well, see, I'm looking for something. It's possible you two have heard of it before. A philosopher's Stone. <laughs> there it is. Do you know anything about it? No, we can't help you. You wouldn't be lying to me now, would you? Why the interest in the Philosopher's Stone? Hey. I want to achieve immortality. Full Metal Alchemist. Mei, Mei Chang. Xiao Mei. Full Metal Alchemist. Ling Yao, huh? Ed is always so hungry for information. I feel like the way to his heart is by having something to share. That's why I sort of felt like in the episode with Greed, Greed could have handled that so much better if he hadn't kidnapped Al and just like come to Ed with an exchange of information or something like that. But this guy is something about the way he said that. It makes it seem like it's not just information. Like it seems like he's here looking for Ed. He's just touching a little bit too close to home because knowledge of the Philosopher's Stone is not just out there in the open, right? It's like you got to have been through some stuff or know some stuff, to even get to this point. So it all seems a little bit too coincidental. Also, immortality has sort of become this big thing in the last couple episodes. In any case, I can't say that I care too much for your way of asking questions. Kind of rude, don't you think? Is that guy an acrobat? Must be a Shinese fighting style. Could be tough to beat. Shinese, huh? Still not as strong. as teacher! Nice. That's pretty cool. These guys are impressive fighters. Damn, you're persistent. Yeah, these aren't just some randos. What are you guys after? You and your boss with the freaky closed eyes. Hey, I landed one. As soon as I insulted Lang, this guy completely lost it. So casual. If this is the best his flunkies can manage, that bastard Ling must be pretty pathetic too. <laughs> He's getting in his head. He's smart. As soon as I insult his boss, this guy completely loses his cool. That is such a tactician. His attacks become weak and useless. <laughs> now then, I think it's about time for me to have a look at your face. <laughs> Whoa, did not expect that. What? Not 
not too bad considering it was my first time. It's Alcatraz Street. I wonder how things are going on Brother's End. <laughs> Master Ling will be furious. Winry's gonna be furious. I spent a fair amount of time hunting rabbits when I was a little kid. Setting a trap for you is easy. Brother! <laughs> oh, hey, Al. So casual. There they are! Huh? Look at Oops. the mess you made! You practically destroyed our town! You're covering the damages. And your restaurant bill, too. <laughs> hey, wait! Just, just hold on a second! This guy and his little entourage should be paying for everything! So sorry, I don't understand much language of this country. Okay, bye-bye now! I'll take care of it. What? You mean you can do alchemy without a transmutation circle now? Yeah. I think it's because of the memories I recovered. Right. Awesome. And that means... <laughs> Don't worry. You can leave this all to me. What's the matter, brother? What, is he worried that Al's gonna surpass him or something? So you shake down strangers for food, and yet you can somehow afford two personal attendants? Well, I am the Emperor's son, after all. The Emperor has a lot of sons. It's like this. My country, Xing, is broken up between 50 different clans, with an Emperor at the top reigning over all of them. The daughter of each clan's chief becomes one of the Emperor's wives. I'm suddenly realizing how big this world is. Here I was focused on this land and Ishval. There are lands on all sides, and now we're getting the inner workings of the land to the east, Xing. The issue of succession must be a tricky one. Indeed it is. That's the problem we're facing right now. The Emperor's health has begun to deteriorate recently. Each clan is doing everything they can to curry favor. And I'm no exception. You want to up your chances by discovering the secret of immortality. Immortality would be a great gift. A stone isn't a tool for some political game. Oh, then I'll have to stay with you until you tell me! No, no, you don't! Get off of me! Did you see that? There was some kind of fight on Main Street. So it's really to... <laughs> Oops. What do you want to go there for? <laughs> I'd like to go see the Hughes family again. But don't you have a lot of work to do here? You're in for a world of hurt. There's something I've been meaning to ask you. You never have told me what your name is. If you don't mind, I would very much like to know it. We don't know either, right? Ishvara people take great pride in speaking their names aloud, as they are gifts from God. I have renounced my Ishvara name. Now go! Keep moving! Uh, right! I'm walking down a path of no return, so I will leave behind me every gift I've received from God. Can't say he's not convicted. That episode just flew by. A new ending song, too. So I don't know if this is actually season two, I just know there's a new opening, but it does in many ways feel like sort of the start of a new arc. This episode seems to have served mainly as the introduction of the, the two new characters who are almost definitely related. And there's a lot of questions that come from this, right? Like there's something about this character, this guy, that seems untrustworthy, right? He sort of carries that that risk to him where maybe he can be aligned, but he's gonna have his own interests at heart at all times. That was made very clear. And so he's along for the journey, but I feel like that's gonna complicate things in a big way. But then simultaneously you have what I'm assuming is his sister with Scar, and she seems like she's gonna be great and really pure and sincere. And it's so interesting that she's aligned with Scar who, you know, in some purposes is the villain. And with them comes the understanding that this is a big world. Like suddenly the potential potential of events just exploded exponentially. Every time I think I've seen the ceiling, like I sort of know who the villains are and I know where the story might be going, new things get added. You know, like if you had asked me 10 episodes ago, I would have told you that Bradley is the head villain. But now Bradley is like a henchman. And I also would have said that the conflict will come from the convergence between Ed and Al, Roy Mustang and his quest for power, Bradley, and then somehow the Ouroboros. But now Scar has been shaped to be way more than I thought he would be. I thought he would be like, you know, a villain in this contained arc. And he's obviously more than that. You have the introduction of these characters from the East. There's just so many ingredients to cook with. So it's very cool. This episode does feel like set up for the future and I'm excited to see where it goes. But that's the end of this episode. I'll see you next time for what I'm, I'm going to call season two, episode two. <laughs>